let's keep talking about wall throws. Now we're gonna move on to the South African. What are we working on? How do we set up that orbit? How do we move into it? Where do we put our knees? We're gonna talk about it in this video, so let's check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, what we're gonna talk about is the South African and your wall throw for the discus. We're gonna continue on. If you watch some of the other videos, we kind of went into and explained some key things and things we're focusing on. And if you're an online member, you went in and we went through that same video. We kind of went really deep and went into some specifics to the system and angles and some other stuff. So if you're not a member, be sure to check out our link below for information on how to learn more about the throwing chain reaction system. Okay, so in today's video we're going to do is Carson's going to set up and we are going to have him do a South African. Now one of the things is there's a, a handful of variations on how we set up but with the throwing chain reaction the thing that we're focusing on is setting a position to create again the right reaction to the throw and so what we're going to do is have him line up and again alignment is one of the key things now you're going to notice again carson's one of my coached athletes so you're going to notice how i like to have our athletes set up we have them set up in this position so that he's going to be able to when he winds his feet position lead to that nice wide sweeping motion into the throw other people like to wind, line up like this where they're more squared up and some people like to have their athletes kind of rotate in and then go you know they'll start this way and then they'll kind of rotate this way and go I think that way is actually a pretty good way too, but what we're focusing on with a lot of developing throwers is really trying to teach that sweeping path and we wanna teach a shorter dropping position. So again, that's gonna be what we feel is a really efficient way of teaching it. This is gonna be what we, we consider kind of a pillar two and a half, three, four, five, six. So what we're gonna do is have him again, he's focusing on the orbit. He, at this point, he's gonna be winding the, the orbit lower because we're gonna be coming up and working into the high point. It's not a high point to high point. So we're gonna throw Gerd up and we're gonna watch where you're gonna notice when he comes out of the back, what we refer to as our pillar one, as he goes to his pillar two, and then in pillar two to three, you're gonna notice that that discus goes from high at the back of the windup down closer, it's gonna drop low because it's gonna hit an incredible high point. He probably has one of the best high points ever of any discus throw. Again, third best furthest throw in history. He's gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be setting up and Carson's gonna wind a little lower because we're gonna be conscious of the sweep leg, the balance arm, and the, the discus ball going to the orbit. Okay, so here we go. Okay, not bad. So one of the things you're gonna notice, I'm gonna have him change his grip on the ball just a touch. So he's gonna be here, and when I have him winding, we're gonna be here, and he's gonna be loading this more here, and he's gonna be getting this sweep, and we're gonna feel a more conscious high point of getting that ball to the shoulder. So this has been one of the things we've been working on with him. A habit last year where he started rotational shot put and he adjusted to the 16 pound and the two kilo. And then one of the differences is he went from being long as a discus thrower to learning to be shorter and more rotational. And that started to affect his discus rhythm, which is a common problem. And we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so we're gonna have him do that again. So he's gonna set up. And one of the core things we're gonna do as again, you're gonna notice again, the position, we're gonna be conscious of his knees being apart, and I wanna see him create more shift to the right so he feels that entry type motion that's really, he's gonna same feeling he's gonna feel in a full throw. So he's gonna start here, he's gonna wind, his is position two, position three, and then he's gonna go, okay. So you're gonna notice he's getting a little narrow and he's pulling this side around instead of keeping everything long and feeling that. And that's again why we wanna get in wall throws. The key thing is here, he's gonna be able to really key in on physical positions. He's gonna be throwing into the wall. He's not, he doesn't care one ounce right now how far it's going. He's 100% focused on what he's doing. And again, this is why we wanted to create this series of videos, really advocate for you guys doing these things, 
because it makes a huge difference. And this is how you're going to be able to focus on technical things and really pay attention to, oh, that was, that felt really good, long, dynamic, and those are the things you have to teach. So wall throws are great for reps. They're great for focusing on technique and they're great for feeling what those positions feel like because you're not focusing on where it's going. Okay, so we're going to do a couple more. And then, like you said, for those of you that are already online members, we'll link it up and you can log into our site and you'll go, we'll go into more depth and add in more pillar drills and pillar connection stuff to break this down in more detail. Okay, so go ahead. So I'm going to set. Okay, stop. So one of the things is, well, I'm going to be a little bit more picky. I want to see him keeping, he's coming up a little bit, which is dropping the orbit this way. I want to see him coming around this way. So that way when he comes around, it's going to keep the chest this way as he comes in. He's going to be able to keep his chest here and it's going to be able to allow him to get this up into the high point and he's going to get into it the high point easier. So if he starts out with his shoulders here, it's going to make him kind of cartwheel too much and we want to see him be here so that this is taking the gradual path this way into the power position. Okay. So again, we're going from our kind of two and a half, three. And so this is where we're always looking at technical positions. So these are the things if you're coaching yourself, or if you're a coach, you want to pay attention to those small details. They add up. Okay, here we go. So watch the, the, the separation and the stretch reflex. So watch the position of the shoulder. There we go. That was better. If you noticed, you could hear his rhythm was a little different, how his the tut tut of his feet, it sounded better. It wasn't tut tut, it was tut tut, right? A little faster. And that means his block leg was getting into the power position better, so he's getting into his pillar five faster and coming through. And again, these would be things we're walking. So the orbit is going to have a big influence on things, how we're setting up the sequence to create all those things. He reacts out of them better. That's the whole goal. And that's what we're trying to get you to learn. So multiple takeaways from this video. Again, wall throws, great for reps, great for technical focus, great for kinesthetic feel of the throw. And because you're doing that and you're not focusing on distance, it's a lot easier to pick up on technical things. And if you can get and in throw into a net where you can get a discus off your hand, we do recommend that our athletes do this. We live in a great, great weather in Arizona, so we can do both, but we get outside. So we're always getting a discus off the hand. So we're not just screwing up our timing. But if you're in a cold weather environment, and this is all you have. If you can get into a net, I highly recommend that. But if you can't, this is definitely going to still help you technically just be prepared. When you start to throw a discus, you're going to have a little bit of an adjustment period of releasing the implement. Okay, guys. So again, thanks so much for watching this video. Again, remember if you're a member, log in, we're going to go through, break this down and add some drills and some other technical specific stuff regarding throwing chain reaction. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and we will see you on the next video. Thanks so much. And again, if we're doing a wind up one, he would keep the hips and he would shift. Now, is this a bad cue? This is the setup. This is his one, two, three. So he's 